It's sad when a mother has to speak the words that condemn her own son. But I couldn't allow them to think that I would commit murder. As if I could do anything but just sit and stare like one of his stuffed birds. I'm not even going to swat that fly there. They'll see and they'll say why she wouldn't even harm a fly. Hi, I'm Bobby and welcome to Dusty Old Movies. My dad first showed me Psycho when I was eight years old, and it was a terrible experience. He talked throughout the whole movie. Look, she's committed a crime. And let me tell you about that twist ending. It went on and on. Later, I watched it by myself and loved it. It is a great horror movie, and it was my introduction to Alfred Hitchcock. By the late 1950s, director Alfred Hitchcock was the official master of suspense. He had a string of hit movies, his own popular television series, and he was one of the few directors who was a household name. However, there was one thorn in Hitch's side. Directors like William Castle had been making these cheap horror movies like 13 Ghosts that had been making a fortune at the box office. And Alfred Hitchcock thought, well, I'm going to make my own cheap horror movie, but I'm going to do it my way and show everyone how high quality a cheap horror movie can be. Then he found Robert Block's murder novel, Psycho, and thought it was the perfect choice. Block loosely based his story on the real-life serial killer Ed Gein. The son of a dominating and religious fanatic mother, Gein lived in a rural area in Wisconsin where he killed people and constructed furniture and clothing out of human skin. I know, he makes me look normal. Joseph Stefano adapted the screenplay. And with a budget of under a million dollars, black and white photography, and his television crew, Hitch went off to make his cheap horror flick and the ultimate Alfred Hitchcock movie. Secretary Marion Crane steals $40,000 from her employer's client and leaves town to go to her financially strapped boyfriend. On her way there, she stops at the Bates Motel. There she meets the shy manager Norman Bates and hears his domineering and mentally disturbed mother. After a nice chat with Norman, she retires to her room to take a shower. However, she is stabbed to death and Norman cleans up the evidence. Private Detective Arbogast, Marion's boyfriend Sam Loomis, and her sister Lila try to figure out what happened, and suspicions arise around Norman Bates and his mother. The story is creepy to begin with, but Alfred Hitchcock uses suspense and realism to turn it into a horrifying experience. The key to suspense is in the anticipation of the event. Take the scene where Marion gets killed in the shower. During the scene in the parlor, Norman shows signs of his insanity. Then, we see him peeking in on her through his glory hole. It's the only way to snoop! <laughs> and then Marion goes in the bathroom. Time for a shower! The scene itself is shocking, but it's the build-up that puts us on the edge of our seat, within the story and within the scene itself, like how we see the shadow first. He uses this technique during the scary scenes, but also during the less significant scenes, and it makes the whole movie more exciting. Along with the suspense, Hitchcock also uses realism to give the movie a deeper impact. The film is inspired by a real case, so it has a reality to it already. And Hitchcock adds these little details to make that feel go even further. For example, this is the first movie to show a toilet flush. And that makes that setting seem like a regular, non-movie bathroom that could be in your very own home. And by extension, it makes it seem like the murder could happen in your very own home too. Blah! Along with the suspense and realism making things scary, so do the characters, especially Norman Bates. 
very few movie villains have ever been as terrifying as Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates. We first meet Norman when it's raining and he's coming from that spooky looking house. We hear his dominating mother, but Norman seems like a gentle soul. He's boyish, has a little stuttering problem, but he tries to be charming, and we really sympathize with him. Then Norman and Marion go into the parlor. We learn that Norman's hobby is stuffing birds, which is a little strange, but okay. He doesn't have a penguin, though. But then during their conversation, Norman reveals hints of his insanity. Wouldn't it be better if you put your mother someplace? You mean an institution? A madhouse? Put her in some place. Have you ever been inside one of those places? The laughter and the tears? And those cruel eyes studying you? My mother there? But she's harmless. As harmless as one of those stuffed birds. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Don't you? The way he says it, it makes it sound like he's been in one. Anthony Perkins subtly goes from normal to psycho before your eyes and that's what makes him so scary because it seems natural and it makes the twist ending believable. Norman is our main character for most of the movie but it's Janet Lee as Marion Crane who first draws us in. We first see her in a hotel room with a man and wearing white underwear. This is important to the story. I'm not being pervy. Then when she steals the money she switches to black underwear. Janet Lee was cast as Marion because she was a movie star and her early death would be a big shock to audiences. While that surprise might not work as well anymore, especially if you're watching my review, her movie star charisma makes you immediately gravitate towards her. And Marion is very nervous when stealing the money, but she's also very quiet and reveals most of her thoughts through facial expressions. You check with the bank? No? You still trusting? She sat there while I dumped it out, planning, and even flirting with me. The rest of the cast is good too, but when Norman and Marion are on screen, it's at its most exciting. Along with the characters making Psycho interesting, so does the film's humor. Psycho has a lot of great funny moments that elevate the movie even more. Hitchcock himself said, why the whole thing is a comedy? And the comedy comes from the darkness and reality of the characters. And quite a bit of it is at Norman's expense. Do you ever go out with friends? Well, a boy's best friend is his mother. The line is hilarious, but instead of taking away, it actually adds to the horror because it reveals the creepiness and tragedy of Norman's character. The rest of the humor is just as funny and is well integrated, and part of why I enjoy this movie so much. Psycho was a huge hit. It spawned sequels and even the popular Bates Motel TV series. It also heavily influenced the slasher genre. In fact, Halloween sector Sam Loomis is named after Marion's boyfriend. Anthony Perkins became forever identified with Norman Bates, and the American Film Institute named him the number two movie villain of all time, and they selected Psycho as the number one thriller. Ed Gein has also had his own horror legacy, inspiring movies like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Silence of the Lambs. Psycho has everything you want out of a cheap horror movie, but Alfred Hitchcock, the writers, and the actors bring their A-game to it and make it into something much bigger, and I give it four stuffed birds out of four. Thank you for watching Dusty Old Movies, enjoy your stay at the Bates Motel. And now, I think I'll go take a shower.